I'd be lying, but I can't deny. I'm definitely all buff. Ooh, that's a hot mug, guy. Hey guys, this is my review for The Deathly Hollows Part 2, the final film in the Harry Potter saga. The absolutely incredible task that Warner Brothers and all of the directors and the actors especially took on almost 10 years after having started with the Philosopher's Stone in 2001. And to think that this was a eight movie project, might have been seven originally, but turned into obviously eight films. This paved the way for things like the Marvel franchise. Nothing had ever been done on this scale this quickly before. Sure, you could say that there's the horror movie franchises like the Nightmares or the Halloweens or the Fridays. They never had the scope, the fortitude, and the absolute massive fan outpouring that the Harry Potter films did. And while I know a lot of people love this movie, because admittedly it is a very entertaining film, and it is the final chapter in this massive journey, it does have flaws. Initially, actually, my original review talked about these issues. I sounded too much like a whiny bitch. To make a long-winded, mushy thing short, Harry Potter meant a lot to me, so I had to redo this review to properly explain what I'm talking about. Talking about. In this film, Voldemort and Harry finally square off. Harry is going after the final Horcruxes with Hermione and Ron, while Voldemort is trying to get back at the school that did him so dirty all those years ago, as well as trying to figure out how to be the proper owner of the Elder Wand. They then converge at Hogwarts school. There's a magnificent battle. People die. Harry dies. Because of that whole prophecy, neither can live while one survives, which I always took it as they both had to die that they couldn't both live. And admittedly, while I wasn't a big fan of how the book ended in terms of Voldemort seeming to have a case of Butterfingers, the film does a far better job in terms of making it a climactic battle, at least in my opinion. And a small little tidbit, I was a very big Harry Potter fan up until the last book. When I finished it, I put it down and I pretty much said goodbye to the whole series. I was just that kind of underwhelmed with the ending. And I never saw the latter four films in theaters, which admittedly is a decision that I've regretted for a long time. And this movie does have some great moments. All of the set pieces are fantastic. The production value of this film is phenomenal. The battle for Hogwarts is fantastic to watch. However, several key story moments that are very pivotal to the film don't come across as well in this movie. It is a part two. Admittedly, you can't just kind of jump into the last film and acknowledge what's going on. Endgame didn't hold your hand really either, but it still is a better finale film in terms of overall scope, I would say, than Deathly Hollows Part 2 is. But again, Deathly Hollows Part 2 is the first film to try this. They couldn't base it off of anyone else. Marvel's Avengers Endgame took what this film did right and didn't do most of the things that they did wrong. For instance, and this is the biggest issue I've always had with this movie, is the Snape twist. I know that it's a very heartwarming and it's an endearing part of the entire franchise. However, the films did such a poor job of explaining Snape's relationship with Harry's parents, particularly his father, as well as his entire association with Harry, Dumbledore, and the entire plan, that it's literally crammed in to one memory. Now, I understand that the memory does have some fantastic moments in it. It's a lot to squeeze into one moment, and Alan Rickman, David Yates, and especially Alexander Duplau, the composer of this film, do a great job of getting all the emotions during that flashback, during the whole going back through Snape's memories. However, there was moments in both Order of the Phoenix and the Half-Blood Prince that could have better established Snape's connection. This film itself is under two and a half hours long, so they could have maybe spent a little bit more time on it. It's nowhere near as hard-hitting as it should be considering how pivotal of a moment it is in Harry Potter history. It's unfortunate too because the scene that was before it was such a great scene portrayed and visualized with Snape being killed by Voldemort and his snake. Obviously they couldn't go all the way, but even for a PG-13 movie, seeing Snape 
being slammed against the glass and being attacked by the snake over and over again was very brutal to watch. And then Harry comes in and Snape's just like, eh, take my tears. It's not as big of a moment as I thought it would be. And that's not just the film, that's also the novel as well because again, the entire concept of Snape taking care of Harry, wanting to, yet hating him the whole time is such a backwards kind of red herring. I still question it from time to time. I understand what Rowling was doing with this, and it is a great twist. It just maybe the overall build to it didn't really make much sense. Also, how the film ends is very sudden. I love the battle sequences. They are really, really cool. It's very dramatic. I love the moment where McGonagall brings down all of the knights and she's like, I always wanted to use that spell and seeing all of the characters from the films come together. And there are some deaths that hit hard. I thought that Fred's death was great. Mr. Weasley, the actor who betrays him, so well done. Lupin and Tonks die. It's kind of like, eh. Like, I know it's not supposed to be ceremonious at all. It's still very random. Also, there's no conclusion with Hagrid. The last scene we see with Hagrid is Harry jumping out of his arms. And this brings me to my other complaint about the film is how they finish the story kind of proper between the three of them while breaking the Elder One and throwing it off the cliff. But there's no conclusion with any of the other characters. The only conclusions that we get are with the main three, which they are the pivotal focus. But there's all these additional characters that we have been introduced to over the years that just get nothing. And the film had time to do it. It's not like it couldn't have been longer. But going back to the good things, the pacing of the film is really solid. I love the buildup towards Harry's death, but then certain moments kind of delegitimize it. I never don't laugh at that scene. Ever because of how Ray finds delivered the killing curse. It's so funny. It's supposed to be such a scary scene. The music's great, all of the build-up to it is really well done, and then it shatters like a broken glass the instant that Rafe says the spell. And there's sure there's that cool little moment when King Cross Heaven with Dumbledore, and I like the little visualization of the broken and dead Voldemort underneath the chair. But again, I'm still laughing at what just happened. i am going back and forth over this film the whole time, and I acknowledge that some people are not going to agree with me for this review. I admit that there's going to be a lot of people who absolutely adore this film from beginning to end, and you are totally welcome to do so. I understand why you do. Just looking at it from a film perspective, it does have issues. World building is also completely absent in this film. It is nearly entirely gone. There's very little of it in comparison to the movies that we got previous. The world building aspect of the films was always pretty consistent. Sure, it became a little bit less towards the end, but in the last film, it is gone. Again, I don't understand why they couldn't have put in a little bit more because they had such a short runtime. This is actually one of the shorter films in the entire franchise. Again, I don't know why they couldn't have done this, considering the absolute exposition smash that was part one. But maybe that might have been why, because of how poorly part one was received. And it is an instant of it falling on its own sword because they were trying to cram in so much story and so much exposition into this film that the part two doesn't have that as much. It is far more of an action ride. And yes, as an action film, it's very fun. But as a story film, to me, it's not as satisfying as I thought it could be. So in the end, I'm going to give Harry Potter and the Deathly Hollows Part 2 a 4 out of 7. Don't hate me. It's still good. I just don't think it's exceptional. Anyways, guys, I hope you've enjoyed these reviews. I enjoyed making them. They were really fun to do. It was really fun to watch all these movies again. The fact that I spent two weeks mulling this review over after having done an initial one just proves to you just how much i wanted to make sure i did these reviews right anyways i hope you guys enjoyed the reviews if you did leave a like and if you're interested in more subscribe i'll have the playlist for my movie reviews which include all the harry potter movies and all my other movies that i've reviewed over the years at the end of the video so if you want stick around and click on that i hope you guys are doing well this is really fun to do and maybe this will inspire me to getting around to finishing all the other franchises that i started and never finished there's a few of them. Anyways, guys, that's all for me. I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching the video. My name is Nitz, and you might remember me from the animated cult classic TV show, Undergrads.
It's been a while, but I'm happy to say the click is finally getting back together in an all-new movie, thanks to a successful Kickstarter campaign. But we are still asking for your support. To see any and all updates about the upcoming Undergrads movie, be sure to check out and like the Bring Back Undergrads Facebook page. And with any luck, we'll see you guys soon.